In this video, you'll learn five foods you should cut or reduce in your diet if you're serious about getting your pain under control. If you like this video and want to see more, be sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, and turn the bell on to get notified every time I post a new video. Many people don't fully understand the link between their diet, inflammation, and joint pain. I'm going to start this video with a quote from one of my favorite books, Atomic Habits by James Clear. The cost of a good habit is in the present. The cost of a bad habit is in the future. Now this may ruffle some feathers, but I don't care. I just want to get good information out to the people that need to see it. If you have chronic pain or you're in the medical profession and have patients who struggle managing their pain, listen up. I've worked with so many older adults who have chronic pain and they tell me they've tried everything to reduce their pain. They've gone through multiple surgeries. They take pain meds that they hate, but they feel like they need them to function and they just can't move. It's hard for them to walk to the mailbox or make it through the grocery store, let alone do fun stuff they actually want to do, like play with their grandkids. Or it could be more subtle than that. Maybe some extra aches and pains in the morning or after a busy day that they didn't used to have. Here's the deal. Then I look in their kitchen and I see a culprit that so many people want to ignore. It's food. They want a quick fix, surgery, pills, stretch, massage, adjustment, or a patch to fix their pain fast. And I hate to tell you, this is the wrong approach. Yes, sometimes quick fixes are needed in acute pain situations, but if you have chronic pain and haven't worked on general lifestyle changes like improving your diet, activity, sleep, and stress habits, then you really haven't tried everything. Anything good in life takes time and work and dedication changing your diet and losing weight included. I know it can be intimidating and you may feel like a failure in this area, but it's so worth your time for your long-term health and pain management. Pills and surgery are never where we should start or stop for pain management. We've got to start with your lifestyle first and foremost, your nutrition. If you really want to reduce your pain and improve your mobility, you've got to get your diet under control. I know that is so much easier said than done, and you may feel like you've tried everything to lose weight and nothing works for you. I promise you can lose weight and you can keep it off. And deep down, you know you have to. I have so many resources on my website for free at reshapept.com and I'll link to them in the description below. They are all designed to help you lose weight for good, so please go download one of those today. And if you're in the medical field and you treat people with chronic pain, I hope you share this video and my resources with your patients. Clinic time is limited and you can't always provide the education you wish you could during your visits, but you can give them a link to these videos and send them my way. I'll give them that education. All right, let's dive into five foods that will increase your inflammation. And I recommend reducing in general for weight loss, but especially if you have pain. Number one is sugar, especially added sugar. There are different types of sugar. The main type of sugar I want you to focus on is cutting added sugar. There is no nutritional value in added sugar. All it does is spike your blood sugar, leading to chronic low grade inflammation and ultimately leading to a rise in insulin levels, which can increase your body set weight. Be sure to check your food labels because you won't always see sugar on the label. In fact, Here's a picture of 75 different names for added sugar. Let's take a look at this fig bar. Three out of the first four ingredients are sugar, and one package has 14 grams of added sugar. The American Heart Association recommends women have no more than 24 grams, and men have no more than 36 grams of added sugar in a day. Notice on the front it says, real fruit plus whole grains. Please ignore any and all food marketing on the front of a product and look at the nutrition panel and ingredients list. The second food to cut from your diet is refined grains. Refined grains are anything that isn't an actual grain or made from ground up grains. The fiber, fat, and protein has been taken out of the grain and all you have is the starch. I'm talking about things like pasta and breads, pizza crusts, chips, crackers, pretzels, etc. 
Like sugar, refined carbs will also spike your blood sugar and insulin levels. If you have them often, you are raising your body's inflammation and augmenting your pain perception. Again, you can't pay attention to fancy marketing. This Nature Valley brand markets themselves for active people, subconsciously making you think if you eat one of their bars, you are going to be healthy and active too. Look at the back. There are 29 grams of carbs and only two grams of fiber. 11 grams of the rest of the 27 carbs are sugar. The remaining 16 grams are starch. If you look at the ingredients, you'll see three of the top seven ingredients are different names for sugar. You've got sugar, honey, and brown rice syrup. Canola oil is the third ingredient, and that's the next food on this inflammatory foods list. Rice flour is another ingredient in the top seven that's a refined grain. Adding that up, five of the top seven ingredients, excluding whole grain oats and salt, are on this inflammatory foods list. Number three is vegetable and seed oils. These would include things like soybean, canola, corn, and sunflower oils. Normally, you don't eat these plain. Processed and fried foods often contain highly refined vegetable and seed oils that are high in omega-6 fatty acids, which when consumed in excess are inflammatory. I've done a video all about fats and I'll link to that in the description, but essentially most people are getting too many omega-6 fatty acids and not enough omega-3 fatty acids. I wanna point out that trans fats are also in this inflammatory category and should be avoided. These are found in margarines and shortenings, again, often in processed foods. Just look at the back of your food labels to see what's in your food. And I always like to say most of your food shouldn't need a food label. Number four is excess alcohol. One study I linked to in the description for this video found the more alcohol you drink, the higher your levels of CRP, also known as C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation. Essentially, the more alcohol you consume, the more inflammation you're going to have. I have two more issues with alcohol. It's just like any other carb that's not fiber. Empty calories. It'll contribute to weight gain. In excess, it lowers your inhibition and reduces your judgment, making it more likely that you won't make great choices for your health. You may stay up later, have a harder time sleeping, do some late, light, late night snacking, like on processed foods, you get the point. To avoid health problems related to alcohol, women should limit themselves to one standard size drink per day and men to no more than two. Number five, processed meats. Protein is the most important macronutrient and it's essential to maintain your muscle mass, strength, and metabolism as you age. But quality does matter. 30 grams of protein from organic chicken is not the same as 30 grams of protein from highly processed and salty beef jerky. Please don't get all of your protein from processed meats like hot dogs, jerky, sausage, bacon, ham, and deli meats. I'm not saying never have this stuff, but it should not be the only source of protein in your diet. So there you have it, five foods that will increase your inflammation and make your pain worse. I always want you to take action on these videos. Think about the five foods I mentioned today added sugar, refined flour products, refined vegetable and seed oils, excess alcohol and processed meats. I want you to pick one thing to focus on. For most people, this needs to be added sugar. Even if you don't eat sweets a lot, I gave you two examples of hidden sugar and processed foods that are marketed to appear healthy. So tell me in the comments below, what's one change you're going to make in the next 48 hours to start eating healthier? It could be as simple as only having half a pop or reading a food label. Whatever it is, put it in the comments and commit to it. Once you declare it in writing, even if it's just to me on YouTube, you are more likely to follow through and keep that commitment to yourself. Don't forget to check out the resources and other videos in the description below this video. And if you like it, hit that like button and share it with your friends and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.